Okay. Three, two, one, go. Let's hope we don't get scared. Alright. Oh shit. <laughs> my, my, what? Okay. No, I had to <laughs> both on with audio for a sec. But uh, oh, right. it's all good now. Okay, so comp. Uh Witch Hunter Captain, Ironbreaker, Merc and Battle Wizard. Probably most standard and safest comp for the map, since we thought Atoll would be like the hardest part of Atoll is the start, so you want a comp that's least likely to wipe at the start. Yeah, and especially with Beastman, it can be insanely rough. Yeah. Mostly because of the terrain, combined with like, you don't want to be charged hither and thither, and then like flipped around by a banner while <laughs> trying to navigate roots, <laughs> tree roots. Yeah, the the starting uh, like terrain is super rough, so we decided on a couple of uh, spots. Basically, not yeah. this place. When we were practicing this particular spot, we we're fighting at the moment. We actually did, uh, chose specifically not to fight here, but when it's Skaven, it's kind of okay. Yeah, that's why, that's why we're staying here now. Yeah, if we had Beastmen, we would have uh, fallen back to uh, like a tree branch thing, elevation thing, <laughs> where there's a decent yeah. terrain. And then yeah, there's a place where it's like it gets almost flat. Well, it's actually flat, but it's a very small space, and then you can hop over a um, a fallen tree trunk. And, oh, you blew up! Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what a noob! <laughs> uh. yeah. Doesn't that happen twice in this run? I, I think can't it, remember. I think it only happens once in this one. Okay, good. <laughs> I just got it out of the way at the start. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Yeah, while we're talking about team comp, I mean, which under captain is just the mainstay for every team comp, really. Yeah. But mm. the main thing to consider with Athol, I think, was, or well, the main thing we had in mind when selecting a team comp for it was the finale. As with most maps, you just think about finale. What the hardest point of the map is, usually the finale. And for this one, it's like, it's all about the sniping. Yeah, it's, it's a very sniper-heavy finale, which is useful because usually uh, the comps that are least likely to wipe are pretty sniper heavy yeah and the other good thing about this comp is that it has a lot of um, panic buttons basically like battle, oh, yeah. uh, battle wizard ult, uh, merc ult ib ult every, sing or, every single every ult is an aoe <laughs> knockback yeah so, so like if you include the the second uh, you know, the burnout then that's that's five knockbacks for, for each for four ults well, you also have IB uh, passive. Okay, six knockbacks. <laughs> <laughs> six knockbacks uh, <laughs> if you need them. So that's super safe. And they're quite large AOEs too. Yeah, whenever something goes wrong, someone has an ult usually. It's very rare. I think, and it, you know, let's not highlight as well how powerful um, Volcanic Bolt is because she's kind of the, well, for a while she's been like the staple dedicated sniper of, of teams, right? Uh, Be kind of. Body shot pretty much every special, or yeah. literally every special with a Witch Hunter Captain tab tag. Yeah. Though uh, I don't think I was that focused on specials this run. I was more focused on just slapping as many elites with my bolt. Because, I mean, but you've also given quite a lot of <clears throat> freedom in that respect. It's not like you're the only sniper. No, no, and that's a why lot I... of other, a lot of other teams would, would uh, when they take an IB, they like to take Drake gun with it. But we tend to take um, sniper weapons because it, it alleviates a bit of pressure off the battle wizard then. Yeah. And so they can focus more on keeping the elite numbers down, which is particularly useful when you don't run a, a Grail Knight. Yeah. Yeah, I like um, having a surplus of snipers. It makes it so that someone will have a shot because uh, like everybody can take a shot. So sometimes the like if you only run one or two dedicated snipers there are situations in which they're pressured and they can't take a shot but if everybody has then there will always be someone that's free yeah i think we're charging back now because we just had uh right okay yeah boss yeah yeah because if you, if you get a boss there you fall back this is probably the best place to fight a boss uh in this area and this is where a bit of pre-planning benefits us because we kind of decided already what the split was in this particular boss trigger so we want to go 2-2 two, two here and we already knew that we want to have you and Ironbreaker on Horde yeah you should always um, 
like at least have an idea of uh, who should be on boss and who shouldn't and yeah. then try to make that happen of course you have to be flexible when you can't make it happen but always try to make it happen ice is dead <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, uh, just this, this is actually a pretty sticky situation because the terrain here is dreadful. Yeah, and it looks it looks flat, and this is probably the nicest place to fight in this drop. But even so, like you can see that little. I'm, I'm watching you at the moment. You can see that little rock in front of you, and there's a little rock to your left, and there's a little rock to your right, and all of those will cancel a dodge. If yeah, you dodge off them. It's and yeah. like block movement and stuff. If you try and walk into them, and it's just horrible. Yeah, Skaven are very non-threatening but when you have a boss up then skaven ambushes are quite annoying because it's very hard to give uh, space to the people who have boss because they will always have trash on them because it comes from everywhere yeah skaven ambushes that's partly why i think chaos are probably the easiest horde type um, just for the reason that they can't get ambushes they're the easiest you. when you have a boss i think the state of current skaven hordes are like a big part of or like a big like selection of the hordes you could get with Skaven are just very sad. So Yeah. Onslaught you, Plus helps a bit with that, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh Onslaught Plus and Spicy Onslaught both like fix the Skaven problem and then Chaos is probably the least threatening, but if you just uh chuck a bunch of Chaos Warriors at people, then <laughs> Chaos will still be threatening. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and that, in that situation it really the, the team comp really shines because uh Every, everyone is always in a position where they can help someone else because everyone can snipe and everyone has contr uh, crowd control. So when you see things popping up behind someone who's going to block their movement when they have to deal with a rat ogre or a special or a heap of elites or something, everyone's always in a position that they can help someone else. So it's like a, a happy little circle. Maybe you said circle, Jack. Happy little <laughs> <laughs> chain reaction of CC. Yeah. This is not a prime place to fight, but I think that it's thin enough in the front that we can just muscle through it. Yeah. I'm going to stand on them. I think we make the call to go back anyway, just in case, because we don't know what the ambience are ahead, so we just want to play it safe. Yeah, you always want to fall back. Uh, if, you, if you're in a bad spot, always try to fall back. Yeah. As it turns out, the ambience were pretty thin, so we probably could have just smashed through. <laughs> yeah, but like, better not risk that. Yeah. You don't know what the uh, what the water holds until you dive. The so bolt is also just... nice if you don't have too many ambience because you can just kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fantastic deleter. When you combine as well, I mean, it's not in our comp now, but when you combine something like Grail Knight and a Battle Wizard Bolt, you don't really need anyone else's damage dealers. You've already, at least for, for base onslaught, you don't need... You, you can put all your other resources into... Uh, utility like iron breaker and uh well iron breaker <laughs> <laughs> well merc is also part utility but he still brings like very good damage but yeah uh, mostly hard damage well i heard grim uh say a, a, a very <clears throat> i thought it was pretty apt for uh for, for like when, when constructing comp team compositions for difficulties first you want to meet the dps check uh, and then after that you don't want to waste resources in overkill. You want to just make sure that you take utility and not, you know, control and safety and that type of thing. Which is which is where, why we take Merc over Grail Knight because Grail Knight in base on slot most of the time is just overkill. It's needless overkill. Uh, yeah. and so going for the safety of Merc means, you know, it's, it's not a wasted, <clears throat> not a wasted heap of stats. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like with just Bolt and Richard Captain, you have more than enough uh, uh, elite damage that you don't really need anymore, and then just just go for safety. Yeah. The we are just taking the best route here, which is just holding on the right. Don't pull too many ambience, and you. Um, it's a pretty decent terrain for Athol standards. For, yeah, my Athol standards is okay. Isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, and you also have quite a few item drops along the right side. Yeah, and like diff everyone, I mean, pe people know where ambience are like thickest, but it's like it's a natural thing, isn't it? Where some areas just have more ambience than others. 
uh, for example. Pit is a good example. Like when you take the direct route straight through the buildings to get to the in the when you first get into the pits, to get to the other side of the pits, yeah. there's like no ambience whatsoever with the optimal route. Yeah, I don't. And here, and here on this map, the, the, the central path, the bottom of the valley, is where all the ambience are uh, clumped up. I think it's also because you're sticking to the sides of the map. So, like, if the ambience are evenly di distributed, you never want to go through the middle because you would end up pulling ambience from all directions. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have. We all got the first trigger, and this whole area is a uh, second trigger, which would be a patrol. So uh, we try to keep an out, eye out for that. Oh, yeah, do we actually hear it here, and then sort of but it like spawns down in the middle in the valley? No, no, we don't hear it here. I don't. Do think we get so. it later. Yeah, we do. We get it later. We pull it. Oh, that's right, and we pull it, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <That's what it> <laughs> <is>. <laughs> Yeah, so but like uh, keeping in mind which triggers you have um, is very important when you decide how much space you're pushing. Especially if you have a boss trigger coming up, usually a patrol you can like here and adjust if you encounter it. But you never want to run into a boss trigger uh, while you have a lot of stuff up. Unless it's like the tail end of a ward. Yeah, but you, you time your, your pushes into triggers and... Yeah, knowing to, where the triggers are exactly is just uh, map knowledge. Yeah, you you just want to map knowledge sort of uh, it, it it lets you fight on your own terms. That's the probably the greatest advantage to map knowledge. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean map knowledge is mostly just knowing um, triggers, difficulty spikes, and um, places to fight. Yeah, and, and on a more uh, micro level, it's like knowing where all the enemy drop climb ups and drop downs are, which I guess falls under knowing where to fight and stuff. Yeah, usually those uh, dictate where a good place to fight are. We're fighting at the ledge here because they always climb here, which makes it easier. Yeah, get a few free uh, frames to whack them. It's a bit yeah. of a dangerous spot, though, in my opinion, because <clears throat> if uh, if a gas, a couple of gas globes get through and then just go inside with like a big elite wave that stops you from escaping immediately, it can uh, result in a lot of damage being done. Yeah. Well, you have to keep an eye out on the the back so you don't get sandwiched here. But if you keep an eye out for that, it's relatively safe because you always have an escape. Yeah, you have to be very unlucky for gas to get thrown there and an elite wave to arrive behind you as well at that exact moment. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> um, the, star, the stars have to somewhat align in a bad way. So I, I guess people might be thinking at this point, these guys are fucking lucky shits to not get beastmen or chaos yet. I think the the map has a <clears throat> a weaker wa waiting for chaos, right? It's mostly like Skaven and Beastmen. Um, At least it seems that way anecdotally. I think so. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't know the details. The <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this next area is a bit uh, shit, and we also get Beastmen. Uh, or like I like I mean this this ledge or ravine part. It's, it's very it. easy. <laughs> Yeah, it's very easy to get sandwich here, and yeah, we're about right. to get a horde as well, and we're kind of gonna misplay it a little bit. Yeah, this this is somewhat like a, a communication error, isn't it? Because, uh, and by communication error, I mean we can't get ice to understand fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I uh, we should have fallen back as for right about now. I got baited a little bit by archers and yeah. went that so way. As you as you enter this area, just to the left is isn't bad. Um, I think it's better than fighting sort of where we are. <laughs> Split. Yeah. Like so, where where me and Simon is, I think is quite good. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I also fucked up my build for the two maps that weren't uh, into the nest. 
Oh yeah, I remember. Because I was supposed to have a uh, best core one shot breakpoint with Dag, which would have been very nice <laughs> in this area. <laughs> <laughs> but well, one other thing to add as well before we move out of that area w when the horde comes <clears throat> and we're split up I think that the, well, uh, part of the reason we split up is because we wanted to go and check for items but then the horde spawned so it was like do we check the items before fighting the horde or do we wait until we dealt with the horde before checking the items and we end up sort of halfway between with our own decision and end up getting split but also the other thing I was going to say is coming into this area to begin with out of that narrow passage we couldn't we didn't we didn't particularly want to go back into the passageway because there are so many enemy drop downs and spawn, spawn points like just behind so yeah we would almost definitely have been sandwiched then if we'd gone back in yeah so it, i think it wasn't the worst thing in the world what we ended up doing it just wasn't quite optimal <laughs> uh it would have been it, if we were a little quicker to reposition it would have been probably optimal but we're yeah. too slow. We also uh, spotted a patrol. So we are kind of clearing up and then waiting to make a push for the drop. Yeah. And this is the patrol that cuts straight across the path, isn't it? Yeah. It just uh, makes loops down there and it turns around very quickly, as you will see later. <laughs> uh, but yeah. We get, there's an interesting trigger overlap as well we get here, isn't there? Yeah. We get the bots very early into the next trigger, like just before we, just before. I, we I think it's a literal trigger overlap, though, isn't it? Because we we trigger it before we've passed the patrol. Yeah. And there's not very many trigger overlaps in this game. I I'm was very surprised by how late the patrol came. I thought that patrol was that patrol spawn was their trigger already. Yeah, I, I at this point I thought we'd just uh, well not at this point but before the, we'd had this patrol spawn I thought wow nice nice shot into Ice's back there. <laughs> yeah. It's fine he deserves it. Um, <laughs> well, he got hooked. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know I was I, I I was almost convinced we'd had a patrol that we just hadn't heard in the big valley. Yeah, that's also a possibility. Yeah, because it can happen. It's such a huge area, and if you're on one side of it and you can get a patrol on the other side of it, well, you won't even hear them. Let alone see them. And here we got it. And we've heard the boss. Yeah. <laughs> you can see because we instantaneously all start charging back the way we came, and then I a few moments later. <laughs> yeah, I think we. M one thing we could have done, which uh, would have been to fall back all the way to the Skaven area, so we would have gotten Skaven hordes with the boss, which might have been a possibility. But. Yeah, that's quite a long way though, because we'd have to go through that narrow ravine as well, wouldn't we? Yeah. I don't that's know if it. you can lodge, lodge, ledge bosses there. Uh, I've never seen one ledge there, and I've tried a few times. So my my instinct says new. No. Right. So now we're just whacking the boss. We should have probably popped potions here. Yeah, we should yeah, have I'm definitely popped I'm... potions. Oh, I, I missed it, but I, I we must have popped at least one. Maybe I used one, and it proxied to me, so I didn't use mine. Might have, yeah. I got. I, got, I had a I speed. Actually, all right. Well, now we get a horde, and basically we have to uh, get this so boss like a... separated from the horde. But he kind of got uh, uh, the team into. But now I'm trying to get aggro, but like I get kind of fucked by the terrain here. And get... Yeah, and then you see me sort of trying to slip behind the bus and cut off the horde so that you don't have a horde plus bus. So I get in between the bus and the horde. Yeah, and now uh, you guys have boss and me and Ice try to stick together while you guys have boss and clear up. And Ice is going to go down to gas, but I just drank a potion because I felt he was going to go down. <laughs> 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 Foresight, nice. Yeah, I mean, he was low and there was gas around, so... And then, oh, that, was a, that was a nice setup for the double gas. Yeah, and now we get boss uh, on on us, but it's pretty fine. We have cleared up, yeah. and uh, yeah, <laughs> but it wasn't an ideal split because all the damages with uh, with you and Ice, that Iron Breaker and a Merc don't do. No, but it was bad. kind of a force yeah. split because I got fucked yeah, by yeah, the I boss. Think we, did, we we improvised it well, I think, given what we were the, the hand we were dealt. Yeah, like ideal scenario was obviously Merc and Witch and the Captain take boss since they both can heal of it. Yeah. Uh, 
and here I use a bomb for a shrap and then I use all to finish off boss and then we try to stabilize again uh, so yeah it could have been cleaner but like we yeah, handled it decently well and we also had like because we have this comp we had a lot of tools to um, make up for mistakes so when I went down, yeah. there were ults to you, uh, so I could get up. And when I just went down, I had ult to get him up and so forth. Yeah. The other thing was, if we had a Grail Knight instead of Merc there, I think it could have gone a lot worse because Merc benefits greatly from having other frontliners to, to wind up. And here they and turn around them. instantly and we pull him. Yeah. And then it was just like we were forced into, into a split. And so I only had an Iron Breaker there, so... I wouldn't have been if I was a Grail Knight. Probably wouldn't have had a whole lot of opportunities to. Uh, yeah, we get kind uh, of uh, kind of fucked by this patrol because they we had just dropped, so we would get ambience plus uh, the patrol, and we had to push forward because it was in the back. So yeah, we couldn't really fall back, so we had to push into ambience, and then yeah. uh, two people go down, and only one can be saved because one went down in a very bad spot, and then we have just. <coughs> Ice is dead. <laughs> Ice is dead, hands up. <laughs> I, I, I did the hands up in real life just then. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we have so Iron Baker ult, which is huge. So it means I can just uh, bolt how much, uh, however much I want. And I have uh, an SV one shot breakpoint, so. Yeah, that's ideal. It's pretty good. I have a little I'm split all... now, but that's fine because I don't really that's, have stings on me. That's, yeah, that's that's a good thing. I think it's kind of like a, <clears throat> when, you, when you have a a horde like a, a just a massive elite like storm vermin or chaos Warriors or something best it goes it's it's a pretty good strat just to split them all up into smaller segments and that way you don't have to worry so much about massive slides uh up to a degree i think the yeah. danger is that specials will pick you off or individual yeah. mistakes um I mean, you don't want to sort of run the whole map away from each other you just sort of want to well, like get we we get move. kind of saved by Iron Breaker out there because that means that um, I have the freedom. Oh shit! I blew up twice. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> ah fuck! I knew it. <laughs> but yeah, Iron Breaker out gives uh, me the space to bolt, and if I can bolt in uninterrupted, then um, the clear speed on elites is very high. Oh yeah. And that's that's a good example as well of why Iron Breaker these days is sort of overtaken uh, Slayer, and Ranger Vet is like the go-to uh, pick for Dwarf. I mean, I think he always was the go-to pick. Well, no, actually, that's not true. I think uh, him getting Gromnil uh, Scurs or whatever yeah. it's called made him very strong in in Wom. Yeah. And also, he is more needed because dodge isn't as OP anymore, so it's harder to have 100% uptime if you have a lot of stuff in your face. Yeah. But yeah, we're now 3-manning and I'm focusing very hard on elites because you guys don't have much elite damage. Yeah, that's true. I went for the Mason Sword pick because it's just got insane unarmored DPS. Um, the hordes just get completely minced. It just lacks a bit of that. Uh, yeah, you could say one like weakness that. of the comp is that the uh, elite damage is very centralized. So once those people go down, you lose a lot of lot in that de in that department. Yeah. But Though there are a, a stack of tools to stop those people from going down. Yeah, that as well. So I think yeah. yeah. Chances shouldn't be very high that uh, people actually go down, unless you pull a patrol. <laughs> <laughs> but then you live through that because you have a lot of safety. So going into the event with very low supplies, which is unfortunate, but not too bad for this event. We have an awkward split here, don't we? Or am I remembering it? Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Gonna be awkward. Yeah, the, we push hard for this res, and I think we really needed the arm IB all to come in sooner, so we had the space yeah, yeah. to get the res. Need a need to get trigger finger. <clears throat> and now, uh, yeah, IB basically drags everything away, so we have space. And sadly, he gets hooked, but freed and hooked again. <laughs> <laughs> 
and yeah we tried to f oh and we also may have had a uh, a slight miscommunication because I called for a drop and Simon couldn't make it so I decided not to go back but you had dropped already oh yeah so that's why we ended up uh, a bit split as well so now we're back to <laughs> three people again but like I, very... I jump back up here don't I yeah yeah you get back up yeah. I, I, did, I was looking at your screen so I didn't see when I did that yeah no you, you, you can get back up there relatively easily but it caused us to be split for a while and we kind of tried to go back but we didn't really commit to it but it doesn't really matter since going back isn't that important the only loss is a bit of ammo on the RB so as strategies go for finales this one is one of the simpler ones run around clockwise and I mean the idea is just stay together as much as you can and divvy up aggro uh, based on it where the person turning is at the time so you want to if, if there's a huge horde behind you just want to keep them behind um so hold ground and let someone run ahead and start turning the the dial basically yeah it's the i mean it's by far the safest way to do this yeah um because it's once it's all about the sniping really yeah you just have to, you just have four people focus on sniping at the start for the initial special wave and then every time you get a new special wave everyone focuses on sniping yeah, even the person turning yeah if you have four snipers like and everybody is decent at sniping you should be able to keep the specials under control that's the biggest part because uh in this event the like the leads and the horde you get are very like small if they are in one place like they're very easy to control because you have a lot of drops and uh, the rest is very easy if people go down but the thing that really fucks you over are like either when the ambience arrive and you get surrounded or when specials stack up yeah so you just got to be really together on the the calls to drop and also not let the specials stack up so the sniping has to be on point and the togetherness has to be on point too. As you can see, we're doing quite well actually staying together at the moment. I say as I watches <laughs> himself into a storm. <laughs> oh, and here I bought ice because he... Oh, look, oh yeah, I, got, I just got launched up onto, out of bounds. Yeah, I shot ice there because, well, like I was charging on my bolt and suddenly he appears inside of no, me. No one's going to blame you for seeing ice. <laughs> But yeah, and then we have like we stabilize again, and then kind of focus the leads down. And someone is turning now again, I think. Oh, it's no, not I'm you or me. I think it's Simon. Yeah, I think Simon likes doing it, and I remember him saying he likes doing it because uh, Gromwells allows him uh, more time than other people would have to carry on turning. Yeah, Which makes sense. So, but now we have like we have the horde controlled basically. They're all coming from one side, and the person who's turning like has nothing on them, and they can just finish them. And now we get uh, another wave of specials, so we focus those down, and once those are down, we can just finish without any trouble. I end up downstairs, but that doesn't really matter since if I get in trouble, people can always drop to me. Yeah. And everyone's everyone's got a tool to help. I mean, Battle Wizards is probably like the best ult. This, well, maybe I guess Ironbreaker's ult could be more useful in some situations, but certainly for helping an ally in need, burnout is insane. You yeah. can be the other side of this arena and you'll still be able to get to them in time and save them from a disabler. So now we finish now, I think. Yeah, I think this is the last one. I was helping uh, a legend team, XN's team, <clears throat> with this event because they were struggling a bit uh, the day before. I think it was the day before, the night before the tournament. And uh, I mentioned so it was uh, it was Lady Onion playing Ironbreaker, and I mentioned a good idea once you've, uh, if you're not confident with when the bosses spawn once you've ended the event, uh, hold on to the, if you know you're about to finish and you don't need it for something else, hold on to the Ironbreaker or stay at the top. And then when you finish the panel, wait until things all crowd up to you 
use the Iron Breaker ult to sort of sacrifice themselves while everyone else escapes, and then you're almost guaranteed to survive until the explosion. But that's that's like that's one survival method if uh, if it all becomes too much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a pretty oh, yeah. cleanish run for it, <laughs> pulling up a troll. Yeah. Kind of good examples of fighting in a beastman area plus boss, and then also at the start of the map dealing with uh, the first boss trigger in that nasty little space. A yeah. little quarry. Yeah. I think it's just um, you have to pick a, a safe comp and then the map isn't too bad if you don't get very unlucky with Beastman and a nasty trigger. Yeah, I think so. Cool, so that's that. That's that. Well, the other thing 